Let's be honest, stringing sucks, and it's a very common problem among people who are new to 3D printing and people who are seasoned veterans. Fortunately, stringing can be easily solved and it's really not that big of an issue, but you may not know how to do it and that's where I come in. Hey guys, I'm Callum from Callum Prince, and this is how to prevent stringing. Along with just these tips that I'm about to share, I did a little bit of experimenting on my own. I have a bunch of small stringing tests here, and I changed just a couple settings on each one to see if I could get the best results. I also printed in two different kinds of filament just to make sure that it wasn't because of the filament I was using. These stringing tests may come up a bit during this video. Anyway, let's get started. Step number one, make sure your nozzle is clean. Any extra filament could make your nozzle easily produce a bunch of strings, and we don't want that. So. One of the easiest solutions is to just take off your nozzle, unscrew it, and then just clean it off. Use a heat gun and a little needle to clean out the inside of the nozzle, make sure there's any extra on the outside, and that'll help prevent some of the stringing. My nozzle is always clean. No, it's not. But it's always clean. So I didn't do any experimenting with that for this. But either way, cleaning your nozzle is an easy way to help prevent the stringing, or at least reduce the amount of it. Tip number two is your temperature settings. This was something that I did as part of my experiment, but I'll get to that in a second. Different temperatures on different filaments will have different effects on how stringy your print is. On the spool itself, the filament will say about how hot you want your nozzle to be whenever you're printing stuff out. And generally that's a good setting to prevent a lot of stringing. But sometimes, even that will still create a lot of stringing like many of these tests down here. So depending on which temperature you use, it will change how much stringing happens. So the easiest way to figure out how to prevent stringing with your brand of filament is to just test it out for a while. As for me, I use Solutech filament, and apparently I'm not pronouncing that right. Solutech, Solutech, but it's basically the same thing, don't worry about it. And I found that 200 degrees Celsius produce the least amount of strings by far. I tried 200, 210, 220, and 230, because that would be about the range that I would ever use for this filament. And 200 produced almost no strings compared to everything else, which had tons of strings everywhere. So temperature is very important when you want to reduce your stringing. Tip number three is your print speed. If your printer is printing more hastily, it's gonna create more strings. That's just how it happens. Weirdly enough though, I looked at this tip and then I did the experiment with changing the speed of my printer from 30 to 50 to 70 to 90, and it didn't really change anything, which is a little bit weird considering that this is like a pretty well-known, highly used tip to prevent stringing, but it didn't really appear in my experiments. Regardless, your print speed can help reduce stringing to an extent, but I don't think it's quite as effective as some of the other things like temperature or the next tip that I'll share in just a second here. So yeah, changing your print speed can help lower your stringing amounts. And the last tip that I have today, tip number four, enable retraction. This should already be a default setting in most of your slicers, but if you don't have it on, it's a great idea to turn it on anyway. This one's probably the most effective, especially if you don't have it turned on. Basically what retraction is, is whenever your nozzle goes from one spot and travels a ways to another without printing anything, it will pull the filament back a couple of millimeters and get it out of the nozzle so that way nothing leaks out during that travel, which obviously will help prevent your stringing. Of course, for me, that was a setting that was already turned on by default, so I didn't bother experimenting with that because I knew that would help reduce the stringing no matter what. So yeah, if you don't have retraction enabled already, I would highly recommend going to your slicer and clicking enable retraction on all of your prints. And those are all of my tips, but I have a little bit more information to share from my experiments. I printed out a bunch of these little stringing tests. By the way, there's a link in the description if you want to do that stringing test for yourself. And I only changed one thing in the slicer. And for all of these, I had a base, and then I would change just one setting on all of them. So first, I changed temperature, and I talked about that earlier. 200 degrees Celsius created the least amount of strings. 210, 220, and 230 degrees all produced tons and tons of strings. So unsurprisingly, temperature does have a pretty decent effect on stringing and I found the temperature that seems to produce the least amount of string, which is great. The second thing I tested was the print quality. Now this is what I mean basically by layer height. So yeah, so on the Enders 3 Pro, there's four different potential layer heights that you can pick in the slicer. You have 0.12 millimeters, you have 0.16 millimeters, you have 0.2 millimeters, and 0.28 millimeters. Now they're all labeled by different types of quality, so I think it's super dynamic, normal, and low. And unsurprisingly, the low quality had the least amount of strings because, well, there was the least amount of layers. It didn't surprise me at all. But the issue with this is obviously you're printing stuff in lower quality and you don't want that. But it is something to try out if you really want to. And the last thing I changed was print speed, which was another tip uh, I mentioned earlier in this video. But for whatever reason, it didn't really change the amount of stringing on my prints that much. So I don't really know why I did that, honestly. I feel like it should have lowered my stringing a lot whenever I printed slower, but it just didn't. But I think I found a lot of slicer settings that will help me reduce my stringing because it's annoying. It leaves these little tags on, on your prints whenever you're done and it's just a huge pain in the butt to clean up. But that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I hope this helps you out. But that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm Callum from Callum Prince, and I will see you guys in the next video.